Hey, this is Kubrick Group. Welcome to our Data Byte series. In the session, we're just going to be looking at unstructured data and how you can derive value by industry from unstructured data. You know, we're all mass producers of unstructured data, and we have been for a long time, whether you think about all of the digital photographs you've taken, um, all of the emails you've sent, all of the websites you've ever looked at. If you go to hospital, then you're going to be uh, perhaps having x-rays or MRI scans. When you ring up a service provider, they'll say that your voice call is being recorded. So these are all examples of unstructured data that's being recorded. How can we derive value from this? Well, parking uh, computer analytics for a moment, ourselves, we process and make decisions based on unstructured data constantly through vision and sound our brain processes those, compares it to what it already knows and makes a decision. So for a decision maker in an organization to ignore unstructured data is to be ignoring what we know as of being about 80% plus of the data around us and making our decision only on the 15 to 20% that we're looking at of structured. And obviously that would be ridiculous. So this leads us to a pretty good quote that I think is very apt here. Uh, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. So don't be put off by the fact that pulling uh, meaning from unstructured data may have inherently been difficult. There's a lot of tools available to us now to make this possible. And to do this successfully will open up massive opportunities in good decision making, more accurate decision making, better decisions. So we're just going to consider a few different industries and the type of unstructured data they might produce. So in financial services, maybe look at um, the oil and gas side of financial services. Um, the trader is going to want to know accurate and near real-time information about supply and demand in, in oil. Uh, where can the trader get this information? Well, by scraping news and by scraping social media and other APIs, they're going to be able to find out what is going on in the world around us as regards supply and demand. Of course, whenever you're scraping websites, you need to make sure that you obey the rate limit rules and that it is, if it's an unsolicited scrape, then you need to make sure that this is uh, legal. Um, with APIs, obviously we have permissions, so we're logging in with an API key. And so also obey the rate limit rules of where we're pulling this data down. Um, in the case of banking and, and investments, we're also gonna wanna look at the corporate actions. If we're investing in a company, we wanna know what they've notes they've released so we may look at the london stock exchange or new york stock exchange perhaps via an api or a web scrape to get that accurate information there's a lot of crossover between uh, banking industry and insurance as well that they're going to the underwriters are going to want to look at similar information so that they can produce an accurate model pricing model for the um, what they are underwriting. So by scraping news, by looking at social media and various websites, they can understand um, whatever it is in the domain that they're trying to price more accurately. Insurers also have a, a wealth of documentation, a wealth of documents. So perhaps PDF documents, but any other kind of document is also valid. This will exist um, in document management systems, in email systems as attachments, in file systems. So imagine you could proactively go out there and seek these documents out, derive structure from them, maybe tab tabular structure or maybe just free text, and then pass that into as text into a natural language processing so that you can understand perhaps the cluster of what that document is talking about in one or two tags. Um, then we can cluster our documents together and say, yeah, these are all talking about the same thing. Even if it's in written in different languages, we can still uh, translate this and then classify it, uh, sorry, cluster it into a, a single term, um, as well as searching PDFs and looking for personal identifiable information. This can all be automated, which is fantastic. I uh, just finally wanted to mention workforce analytics. So to understand our workforce and to really understand them and, and, um, and how they work, what their process is, how they're feeling, we can understand this information by looking in the log files of emails so that we understand the communication channels. 
the log files of websites so that we know perhaps our intranet site so we know what our workforce is looking at what they're searching for where they're frustrated maybe and also by understanding and transcribing the voice recordings then maybe we were better placed to be able to predict and understand employee churn or in the case of our customers customer churn by quantifying and understanding the sentiment of these voice recordings. So there's loads of opportunity and loads of use cases for um, deriving value from unstructured data. These examples can actually be boiled down to um, just a few different data types that will be outputted downstream from these various sources. Um, first of all, just considering social media and APIs. There are two types of APIs. You're either going to be pulling out a RESTful API, in which case the output will likely be a JSON uh, semi-structured document, or if it's a SOAP-based API, then you're likely going to be uh, retrieving XML data. These are not unstructured. They're semi-structured documents because they have structure to them, but they're also not your typical CSV, so they are uh, he likely heavily nested. Um, so in the case of a tweet, you're pulling down a tweet, you've got JSON uh, data. Well, inside there will be the status that will contain the free form text, which is the unstructured information, which we want to quantify maybe to understand the sentiment or classify it. So we can push that into a natural language processing downstream. NLP is fantastic. It allows us to not only understand sentiment, but also um, clustering topics together by using algorithms such as words of ec or documents of ec um, which if we have a trained model then it will be able to understand yeah i understand what that uh, paragraph or sentence or piece of text is talking about the log file the pdf the web scrape these are all examples that produce text um, and also the transcribed version of the voice logs again producing text but in the middle there we've just got a diagram showing um, the output or how you would process image data to be able to understand what the actual uh, image contains and so to apply computer vision. Well, human vision is obviously processed by the neurons in the brain. Um, well, computer vision mimics the same thing. Through neural networks, we have multiple layers um, of neurons which um, trigger each other and gradually build up a picture so they can recognize and classify what they're looking at and saying, yep, I recognize that image. I've seen it before um, via this pathway. So this is known as deep learning. Now, the output of all of these will, can then be passed into a structured system once we've quantified it. Now, it's all well and good and very good to be able to understand unstructured data, but we'll be missing a trick if we, if we stopped there. We must also um, this is a pitfall to avoid. We must also understand the metadata of those files that we're storing on, in our data lake. And this will apply context to the unstructured data so we know what we're actually looking at. Things like where did that data come from? What is the source? What are some tags that describe that data? What's the point in time the, the, of when that snapshot was made of data, the date? Um, what is what's the geographic location of what it's describing and so on or who's the customer that it's describing so we need to store this scalar data in a relational system just like we would any other scalar data in a relational database later on we're going to see how we can then couple that back together um, so it's seen under one view so some tools that we have available just want to consider what role a relational database plays in storing not only the unstructured metadata but also sorry, not only the structured metadata, but also the unstructured data, what role a document store database can play, such as MongoDB, and what offerings does AWS provide for us to help us as a cloud service provider? And then finally, a quick look at what data virtualization is by means of Denodo. So relational databases we may think of as just storing and providing access to, in a fantastic way, uh, relational data. That's what they are the master of. However, an example here in Microsoft SQL Server, I think this was 10 years ago, this feature was released. File stream storage allows us to create a table like any other table to hold the metadata. But one of those fields in that um, table can store var binary, um, which being our unstructured blobs, perhaps binary large objects or character large objects. 
you can store that in the table together with the metadata describing it so that the two are then coupled. We are not looking at one without the other. We understand the context and the unstructured data itself. File stream storage pretends to store it in the database where actually it's just passing it through to the file system underneath, which is actually um, better placed, um, more proficient at storing unstructured data than a database. But SQL pretends that it is all stored in one record, which is great. So I recommend checking that out. Uh, if we're storing semi-structured JSON data, then look at document store databases. MongoDB is the leading document stored database according to DB Engines, which is based on um, searches on the internet for that product. So um, this is a fantastic tool for storing JSON data, but also for retrieving and analyzing and aggregating that data. Even if it is nested in many layers of arrays or child documents, uh, via the MongoDB aggregation pipeline, we can summarize it all up to a flattened level and quantify this data. So this is also a very powerful and fantastic database engine tool. AWS, well, I've given us a drop down list box there or a snapshot of the different AWS machine learning services available and just pulled out a few of them as an example. So Amazon Textract, this allows us to feed in images and Amazon Textract can identify the text stored in those images and pull that out for us as a scalar value, which we can pass downstream to NLP. Amazon Recognition, this is for image recognition data. Obviously, really fantastic for being able to say, yep, these images are all of the same object. And that uses deep learning, uh, deep learning trained models to be able to achieve that. There's some really cool features in there, such as being able to feed in video. The example they give is of sports, um, a football match, for example, well, Amazon recognition will be able to trace, recognize the same players and trace their path of movement throughout the field of play. And finally, Amazon tra Transcribe. So if we do have voice data, of which we will have a lot of recorded, that in itself is useless. So we need to transcribe it into text so we can understand and analyze, as the example earlier on, employee or customer churn by passing that into sentiment analysis in NLP. So there we've got three really great products for dealing with storing and analyzing unstructured data. But remember we talked about metadata. This provides the context to the unstructured data we're looking at. The two will be stored in totally different systems almost always. So you've got your data lake on one side and you've got your relational metadata on the other side. Well, data virtualization means you don't have to move this data, you don't have to integrate it like you typically have been doing over the last 15, 20 years via data warehousing and all the other things that have came, around, came about. No, now we leave them where they are, but via Denodo, we create this intermediate layer, this virtual layer, which joins the disparate sources so that it appears to be in one location for our analysts to be able to then go there to analyze and look at that data, the metadata and the unstructured quantified, the quantified output of the unstructured data that we've created. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, we've seen some different tools and we've had a little reminder of the value of unstructured data and also by industry, the type of things that um, our clients and, and all the other organizations out there are looking at analyzing. So thanks very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed the data bytes.